what about this picture is ugly? Is it the pothole? Or is it the fact that there's no human beings in this photo? My definition of ugly is a piece of infrastructure or a place that doesn't engage people, that doesn't make it a place to enjoy yourself. To me, this is ugly. To me, this is ugly. It's not the rust, it's not the fact that they're worn down, it's the fact that they don't inspire. The bus stop does everything it needs to do to shelter people getting on a bus. The bridge does everything it needs to do from getting people to walk from one place to another, and those are great things. But they don't inspire and they don't engage. To me, this is beautiful. It's not because it's shiny. It's because they went beyond. They took what was a piece of infrastructure that was just jetting fuel out of a, or uh, steam out of a building, and they made it beautiful. They made it something that engages. They added art. They took it that next level and made it something to engage with. To me, this is beautiful. This is a parking lot that, when it's not being used as a parking lot, is being used as a farmer's market. It's a place where people go. They interact. They talk to the people in their community, and they engage. My definition of beauty is a place that engages people, a place that's more than its initial use, a place that you can enjoy, a place that challenges your ideas. Beauty doesn't have to be something that's visually appealing. Beauty has to be something that engages you. Beauty has to be something that makes you think, discuss, and just lets you have fun. This is a great piece of infrastructure. You can't tell where the road starts and where the sidewalk ends. It's got everything that needs to be beautiful, but it's not beautiful until you add people. As soon as you add people, that picture becomes beautiful. It becomes a place for people, and it becomes a place where people are engaging and talking to each other. When you build infrastructure like this, where there is no place for people to engage, there's nowhere for people to walk, there's nowhere for people to talk to each other. When you take your infrastructure, and this is a road leading to one of the nicest parks in this city. One of the nicest parks, I think, in the world. It's a beautiful area to go, to go visit. But when you look at this, look at how gorgeously clean the place for cars is. And then look where the places for people are. You've got one awesome person that swept in front of their place, but other than that, it hasn't been de devoted to people. If you look along the side strips, if you ever want to find room for a bike lane, <laughs> all winter long, no car has touched that area. When you build a parking lot for 500 cars, and only 25 generally use them, and that's all it's being used for, for three retail stores, 500 slots, it's a lot of space. It's a lot of places for people to engage and to talk to each other and enjoy life. I know people want to get out. I know people want to run. I know people want to bike. And I know this because they'll drive to do it. They'll drive, fill up a parking lot so that they can go run on a treadmill inside or, run on a, or go on a bike inside. People enjoy being out. When you build the spaces, people fill them. This isn't something that's a question and you know, if we build a bike lane, will people start biking? We know this because places that build bike lanes get filled. We know that if we invest everything in one type of infrastructure, that's what gets used. If you don't put any investment in places for people, and all you're putting pl investment is for buildings and cars, well then where's the, the space for people to engage? When you're driving around in a car, you can make it about 10 kilometers, or about eight kilometers in 10 minutes. About three and a quarter on a bike, and about a kilometer on foot. If you reverse that, and start thinking about that as a business person, business people look at a primary market. So if I'm selling a convenience good, my primary market geography is gonna be a little bit smaller 
because people want to get to it quick and buy it. If I'm buying uh, a large item, a house, a car, a, a furniture, you're going to go a little bit further because you're not going to buy it as often. So if my primary market is a 10-minute span around my business, and I'm in a city that's built for cars, that's one primary market. If I'm in a city that's now built for bikes, I'm in a primary market with six other, seven other people. If you have a place for people, where people can walk and engage, you've got tens of dozens of primary markets. And what happens when you do that? You end up with stronger small business. Large, big business competes on cheap, and they compete on convenience. Small business can't compete on that. It's a different business model. They compete on unique. They compete on service. They compete on offering something that other people can't. They're small, they're nimble, they can react to the people in their neighborhood, they can change the products that they have to really suit the people around them and to challenge the people around them. When you have all your businesses that are based on large and based on cheap and based on convenience, the reality is the internet is much cheaper and much more convenient. When you base your business model on cheap and convenient, in this day and age, you're basing your business model on something that can go extinct very easily. Small business in the future has more opportunities to compete by relating to the small areas around them than large businesses will by having to compete with online. Don't get me wrong, a five-gallon bottle of ketchup is great, but nobody's going to big box on a bike. You're just not bringing it home. <laughs> Now, it's, uh, this talk's not just about happy, and it's not just about joy. But when you add great infrastructure, like this, this is a bus stop. Bring it down a little bit. Can we bring the volume down a little bit? <laughs> this is in Montreal. This is a beautiful piece of infrastructure. Look at the people engaging. You see people from all walks of life, young, old, right across. They're enjoying themselves. They're happy. They're engaging with their city. People walk by. Nobody stops without looking. People are part of this experience. It's a fun place to be. But this isn't just about happy. It would turn out that happy actually makes you productive. When you're happy, you're 10% more productive than when you're not. Canada's GDP per capita is $43,472. That means if you can make somebody happy for one day, that's $12 in increased productivity. That means in a city our size, in a city the size of Sudbury, if you can make 1% of the population happy for one day, 165,000 people, it's $20,000 in productivity you're adding. Now, the problem with that number is it's very ha hard to ever only make one person happy. When you make someone happy, they go out and they interact with more people, and it makes them happy. So if you have a piece of infrastructure that makes 1% of the population happy, you're making a much larger percentage of the population happy. And you're adding much more productivity to your city. You're making your city a better place. This is another great piece in Montreal. Now, this building on its own, it's gray, it's rough. There's some glass in front that makes it a little bit pretty. But they did something fun. They added some lights. This light project is amazing. What they've done is they have people with little colored blocks, and they're putting them on this conveyor belt. And as the conveyor belt runs, a little sensor is reading the colored blocks, and it's projecting those up on the wall. So that when people add to it, 
they're changing their space. They're interacting with their space, and they're making it something fun. What's great about this is as you see people walking by, you're going to notice that everybody looks. And most people stop. Most people interact. Most people engage. And this is in the evening. This is in the evening, in the third period of a Habs game in Montreal during the playoffs. <laughs> and there's people on the street engaging. When you put people on the street, when you have people engaging, and you tell them that it's okay to be out at night, that it's okay to engage, you're making it a safer place. Lots of people on the street in the evening equals safety. I'm chair of a downtown organization in Sudbury, and I meet with downtown organizations from all over Canada and all over the world at different conferences. And every downtown organization has done the exact same survey. Why don't you come downtown? And what's the number one answer? It's parking. What's the number two answer? I don't feel safe. When you put people downtown, when you make a place for people, when you make a place for people to walk, people to engage, both of those don't matter nearly as much. All of a sudden, people are comfortable walking that extra block. People will engage a little bit further, and the parking isn't nearly as important. All of a sudden, they see people that they're comfortable with. They see more people on the street. Now, when I was in Montreal, and we were filming that, we were asked for money several times, the same that happens in every downtown. We saw people that weren't the same as us, the same as every downtown. The difference was there was a lot of people that were like us, and there was a lot of people that were like other people. And it makes you feel safe. It makes you feel like it's a place for you. And it makes you feel like you belong. Adding people is what the solution is, and adding places for people is how you get them. So I ask you again, is this pothole the cause of this place being ugly? Or does that pothole get caused because no one cares about this place? Does this pothole co get caused because there's no people engaging? When you have people engage on a regular basis, you have places that people care about. In New York City, when the Brooklyn Bridge was getting in rough shape, it was a beautiful piece of architecture, and people cared. And people came forward, and they said, we need to fix this. We need to make sure that we maintain this piece of infrastructure. When you had uh, the clock tower in Back to the Future, it saved Marty McFly, because everybody cared to make it fixed. <laughs> when you make places beautiful to begin with, people will get behind that piece of infrastructure. So why don't we build beauty? We don't build beauty because we've fallen into a trap. We go out and we pay taxes. And we assume that we're paying taxes to buy a basket of goods. We're getting our roads done, we're getting our sidewalks cleared, we're getting plowed. You're not really buying a basket of goods. You're investing in a co-op. You're investing in a business that's making your city. And when you invest in something that makes somebody else happy, even if it doesn't affect you, you're still profiting from that. Because what's happening is you're making somebody happy that wants to stay in your city that's contributing to your tax rolls. Business gets this. Ted gets this. When I'm on this stage, you're taking me more seriously because of everything that Ted's done, because everything that Ted stands for. When you look at the amazing job that the volunteers have done to make this stage amazing, when you look at this room that Science North has done, and I'm sitting in the middle of a rock formation, and they allow me on this stage, it improves the view that you have. A city is a stage for its people and its businesses. When you make that stage beautiful, you make those businesses stronger, because people feel better about them. They want to engage with them. Those businesses want to live to the level of that city. They want to be as, as forward-thinking and as beautiful as the city around them. So how do we create beauty? Well, sometimes it's not that tough. Sometimes all it is is thinking ahead. When you're building a parking lot, which is basically just a storage hall for cars, 
Why not leave space for people to engage on the main floor? Why not encourage people to come out in the street and create happiness? Why not, when you're building something as simple as a lighting structure, add some eyeballs to it, make it fun, make it twisty, make it curvy? Why not engage your local businesses and say, why don't you put something beautiful on our street? And as exchange for making something beautiful, we're going to get you to keep the area around it safe and clean. When you do this, you stop this, and you create this, and this. and this. It's time to put a little bit of joy back into our lives. <laughs>